2024 is rapidly coming upon us. I think at the time of this video, we got about two months left. Got November and December. 2023 is over. 2024 is right around the corner. The housing market has changed a lot since, you know, the end of 2022 going into 2023. Uh, you know, everybody had champagne wishes and caviar dreams going to 2023 when it came to the housing market. They had big plans. Uh, so just starting this off, Alex, what do you expect from the housing market in general going into 2024? The housing market in general, I think that, I mean, we've already talked about interest rates. If they don't continue to go up, then they'll hit a standstill. And from there, it could cause economic pain. And then for them to reverse a recession, they'll start dropping interest rates. So I don't know how soon it would happen if that does happen anytime soon. But if that does happen i think it i think i mean obviously we would see a big change because obviously we're seeing how the economy is getting affected with rising interest rates and such so i'm still new to this i have to be honest so to see a reverse on that um i have to I have to learn from that too because i've just seen pain and turmoil this whole this whole time <laughs> right and and the thing is is this is uncharted territory for a lot of people. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the last time we had a situation like this, we going into rising rates is back in the seventies and eighties. That's the last time we, we really went into rising rates. When they start talking about, you know, the last time interest rates was at 8% was uh 2000 that was coming off 15 and 16% in the eighties. It was still coming down, but the last time it was at eight percent was in two thousand. But now we're going to an interest rate environment where the interest rate is rising, like we had in the seventies, going into the eighties. So it's uncharted territory for a lot of people. And the thing is, is so for me, I'll start off as an investor. As an investor, I would want the interest rates to stay higher. For the economy as a whole, I would want interest rates to stay higher. And I know people going to whine, if the interest rates stay higher, we're going to create a recession. But have anybody really thought about the inverse of what happened if interest rates drop? So let's just give you an instance. So Alex, you already own assets. The interest rates drop, the value of your assets go higher. The people that own assets, they're already in a recession and own little to nothing. So the interest rates drop, the cost for those people with nothing to buy an asset goes higher. So what that does is separates more the haves from the have nots. So that's why I say economically, I wanted to stay higher. And I know people look at, you know, mortgage payments, car payments and things like that on how much they can afford on a monthly basis. I understand, but you don't know what you're asking for if these rates just precipitously drop and get back down to the three, four percent. So, for instance, somebody who bought a house, let's say, let's just use 2022. They bought a house, $500,000. Is the value of their house going to go down a little bit because we had 8% interest rates if they were trying to sell? Yes. I mean, of course, they're going to say the national average is still higher than most, but in some areas, because the affordability to get the house sold. If you're a four seller and you bought a five hundred thousand dollars and you need to get rid of this house tomorrow, you're going to probably have to drop that price, that the price of that property below five hundred thousand to get it off your hands, because the number of people that could buy at an eight percent interest rate is a lot. I mean, a few, very few. Excuse me. So, but let's say this person is still holding. Now it's worth five hundred thousand dollars at eight percent. That interest rate dropped to two percent, three percent. That five hundred thousand dollar probably going five hundred thousand dollar home is probably going to go up to six, seven, eight hundred thousand. And then so they have the asset, so their net worth, you know, that imaginary number is going to go higher. The people who still trying to get on the economic ladder is going to have to pay up more to get on the economic ladder. And then that's why I rather it stay at this level for a while and then let the prices settle in. And then those people who don't have anything, they can work, they can start building up capital 
to get on the economic ladder so it can smooth out. So it's still a, you know, upper class, middle class, and a smaller, lower class. But if these rates drop, it's just going to be a bigger upper class and it's going to be a bigger lower class and then the middle class is going to shrink because believe it or not it's people that make a hundred thousand dollars a year that don't that don't have the assets the only people that win in a low interest rate environment financially is the people that already have assets that's the people that win so if you don't want to you know see you know people stunting and everything going these youtube channels of what they have because they already have assets and you still trying to come up with your first down payment on the first starter home which you know just a couple of years ago would cost you maybe a hundred a hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a starter home now it's costing you four or five hundred dollars for a starter home then you do not want interest rates low because it just drives demand and then you have more competition so 2024, that's what I'm hoping happened as an investor and as somebody that studied the economy. I'm hoping that it stays here. And like you said on a previous uh, video, you want, you can do better deals at higher interest rate. You know, as people that support sellers, you can, you know, maneuver and shake. But Alex, that's what you got. I don't, I don't want to take over the whole video. <laughs> yeah, I think separating, that that's scary, I think, um, <clears throat> for America, separating right the uh, two classes and shrinking the middle class because america has been known for having a large middle class <clears throat> which is you know been the majority of its citizens being middle class and that's why we have a you know functioning society i would say so to absolutely destroy that is it's insane and i mean truthfully if they if they were to drop interest rates so soon that's it's almost like that's their plan all along. I mean, look at how quick they dropped rates, how quick they rose rates. And if they were to drop them again, it's like they're just throwing it all over the place, you know, manipulating the market. And I mean, you're right. I mean, I remember when we had bought our home. It was advertised as, you know, new construction builds advertised starting from the 180s in florida and then they've just cleared land close to us um and the signs are advertising starting from the low 400s and so if they were to drop rates and that was just three years ago three four years ago so if they were to drop rates again i can only imagine you know how how high prices will go from there and and that's the that's the thing i mean for me for me as an investor I, of course i already have i already have a home and i i paid 132 i paid 132 yeah i got it at the uh you know when we started recovering from the financial crisis and you know florida got hit the most but it's i wanted to stay higher as an investor because doing deals and things like that is easier. I know it on for you know the owner, I, the person who's you know trying to start out. The monthly payments will be higher. I get it, you know, and everybody looks at it at a monthly payment basis. But it's better for you, the home buyer, to get a house at a lower price now. Yes, it's going to be you know some pain because your monthly payments are higher. So you got to structure you know, family situation the way you need to, to make that payment. But eventually, eventually the rates will get lower. And then when the rates get lower, you should refinance, not cash out refi, just refi to lower the interest rate to, you know, make it less burden on yourself. The thing you don't want is for you to, you know, you get stuck in that mantra of, oh, I'm gonna wait for the interest rates to drop understand everybody's waiting for the interest rate to drop me as an investor i'm waiting for the interest rate to drop the big institutions that's buying up all these single family homes in your neighborhood now they're waiting on the interest rate to drop and then you think you're going to outbid them just think of covid covid every house was going over ass it was a big war on every house 
So do you want to get into that game of getting in a bid in the war, trying to overpay for a house just to get a house? Or do you want to be able to do your due diligence? Because back during COVID, people was waiving inspections. They was waiving everything just to get in the properties so they can lock in a deal. Now it's going back to the old mantra. You know, you drive up, you see the house, you do a walkthrough. You know, during COVID, you couldn't even do a walkthrough until you was under contract. Now you can do a walkthrough. You can get an inspection and see what's wrong with the property. You can use that inspection to talk down the price. You can ask the, the sellers because the sellers know now it's a, it's at a hard time to buy, buy real estate. You know, you can ask for concessions, money off, you know, money towards down payment, money towards uh, principal pay down. I mean, uh, interest rate pay down, excuse me. So you have way more levers because if we have a historic drop back to the threes and fours like we had during COVID, then all that stuff goes out the window. It's, hey, do you want to buy the property? It's $300,000. Oh, somebody just came with an offer of $350,000. Do you want to outbid that? The people only asked for $300,000. I'm literally seeing, how, I was literally seeing during COVID houses going for, you know, $100,000, $300,000 over asking price because the interest rate was so low. You don't want to get in that game plan when it's people that got a lot more money than you that can outbid you. So the best time for owner ox, the best time, I believe, for owner ox, first time home buyers and people not, I'm not saying move up in house. Now, if you in a house, don't, I'm not saying move up in house because you got a great interest rate, but people that's not even on the property ladder, this is the best time for you because it gives you more leverage to move left to right to make the deal happen. That's all that means said, guys. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.